Chapter 4.2 A Whole New World The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. Albert Einstein, reference 74. Well, could have been an Aladdin quote. Chapter 4.2.1 Firepower equals computing power. Brain tissue requires about 20 times more power than muscle tissue. The most energy-consuming part of our brain is the modern part, the neocortex, which is used for high-level processing and abstract thinking. For shrew-like mammals, the neocortex represents about 10% of total brain volume. The average mammal's brain volume is 40% neocortex, Primates have an above-average neocortex volume of 50%, but even a primate's neocortex is small compared to anatomically modern humans. A staggering 80% of sapient brain volume is neocortex. This substantial difference, difference is shown in figure 32, reference 68. And here we go, here's figure 32. Comparison between a sapient brain and that of its closest surviving ancestor. Humans can afford to power their large neocortices because of the energy abundance they achieved by learning how to control fire. Humans unlock far more energy per unit of food consumed than other animals thanks to their ability to cook, just like a staged combustion cycle on a modern rocket can unlock more energy for relatively little penalty in size, weight, and power by using a pre-burner to combust fuel and oxidizer before it reaches the combustion chamber. Humans operate the same way. By cooking their food, humans pre-burn their fuel as a form of pre-digestion pre before it reaches their combustion chamber. Stomachs allowing them to unlock substantially more energy per unit of food with only a minor penalty to size, weight, and power. And just like how more energy allows a rocket to carry more payload on top of it, more energy allows a human to carry more payload on top of it too. Humans enjoy a step function rise in surplus energy when they took control of fire, which they vectored towards performing the high energy intensive task of thinking. The brain represents only about 2% of a modern human's body weight, yet it consumes about 20% of its energy. Unfortunately, human, I mean, fortunately, humans became so rich in surplus energy that they were able to habitually overclock their near cortices to the point where it drove dramatic physiological changes, giving rise to the modern sapiens massive near cortices and oddly bulbous heads. Reference 68. Learning how to control fire and gain access to exogenous energy caused sapient brains to grow so quickly that they outpaced the growth of their own pelvises and birth canals. Combined with their tendency to walk upright, these sudden anatomical changes cause sapiens to have far more complex and painful childbirths than, than other primates. Sapient heads are so large that they must be born approximately 50% prematurely with only partially assembled skulls and necks just to fit through their mother's birth canal. For this reason, sapiens are significantly more fragile and helpless at birth compared to other mammals. And they must go through a longer adolescent period to account for having to incubate outside the womb. But as the saying goes, the juice is worth the squeeze. A sapient's massive neocortex is the source of the most significant power projection technique observed on Earth. Reference 68. Chapter 4.2.2. Using imagination to create a virtual reality. Atomically modern sapiens and their absurdly large foreheads, shown in figure 33, emerged from Africa at least 200,000 to 300,000 years ago and expanded into Europe as the ice melted. 
Despite their physiological similarities, sapiens don't appear to have behaved like the ones today until the Upper Paleolithic era started around 50,000 years ago. This is when the fossil record first starts showing signs of sapiens having a higher degree of intentionality and theory of mind required for the highly self-consciousness behavior of modern humans, a phenomenon often called behavioral modernity. Reference 68. It was during this time frame when sapiens started tracing their hands on cave walls and signaling extraordinarily high levels of self-consciousness compared to other animals. They started making distinctions between themselves and their environment with both objective and abstract qualities. It's unclear what exactly caused human consciousness to spark, but when it did, it appears to have spread quickly. Reference 68. Charles Foster describes the change as follows. Something tectonic happened to human consciousness in the upper Paleolithic era. Whether by revolution or revelation or evolution, a new type of consciousness emerged out of or in addition to or in substitution for the consciousness that had been there before. For however long it had been just stated, a new type of self-perception and self-understanding had burst. It was manifested in a new symbolic sense, so much better at expressing itself that it looked different in kind or degree from anything that had existed before. Reference 68. And that's figure 33. It should be noted that sapiens are first and foremost hunter-gatherer nomads, having spent only the last 5% of their history on Earth doing anything except traveling the world searching for fauna and flora to eat. Their overclocked, overpowered, and oversized neocortices are especially useful for these activities because they help their hosts perform advanced pattern finding. The ability to connect dots between sensory input information enhances sapiens' ability to detect and exploit patterns of behavior in surrounding fauna and flora for improved hunter, hunting and gathering. The advanced dot connecting and pattern finding capability of the brain is colloquially known as intelligence. The more an animal can use their brain to connect dots between their sensory inputs or detect valid patterns of behavior within their environment, the more intelligent the animal is perceived to be. Not surprisingly, with 80% of their brain volume com compromised of advanced pattern finding neocortex hardware fueled by excess energy and firepower, Modern sapient brains are the most intelligent on Earth. Sapient brains are so effortlessly good at dot connecting and pattern finding that they don't even need physical sensory inputs to detect patterns. It is possible to put a behaviorally modern human in a dark, empty, sound-dead room and their brain will have no trouble envisioning many sights, sounds, and objects. They will connect dots between sensory inputs and detect patterns which don't physically exist. This remarkable capability is known as abstract thinking. Imagination could be described as the phenomenon which occurs when human neocortices use their abstract thinking skills to form ideas, images, or concepts independently and without physical sensory inputs. This thesis uses the term imaginary to describe phenomena detected by human brains which don't physically exist in shared objective reality. Imaginary patterns can occur either due to false correlation to physical sensory inputs or because the pattern was formed without sensory inputs in the first place. The author acknowledges that there are detailed fields of philosophy with far more detailed and varying definitions of imaginary. This is how the author will use the term throughout this thesis. Because of their ability to think abstractly and find imaginary patterns, sapiens operate in two different realities simultaneously, one in front of their eyes 
and one behind them. As shown in figure 34, the author defines the concrete reality in front of a human's eyes as objective physical reality, the domain of energy, matter, space, and time which precedes humans and produces our physical sensory inputs. This reality is shared by all humans regardless of whether they can detect or conceive of it. Moreover, physically objective reality exists in and of itself, although sapiens technically can't process it objectively without the abstract biases caused by their own brains. Here is figure 34. Objective and subjective. Input, output. Okay. The reality behind a human's eyes can be defined as subjective abstract reality, a non-physical domain constructed out of the abstract thoughts of sapient near court to seize and filled with imaginary patterns like symbols and semantic meaning. This reality can either be exclusive to one human mind or it can be combined with other human minds. This abstract reality can either be an individual reality or it can be a shared reality, where the latter occurs when sapiens get other people to see and believe in the same abstract reality together. No other species on Earth appears to be as capable of perceiving abstract reality as sapiens. It is possible that other animals simply aren't physically capable of it, because they don't have enough brain power and neurological circuitry needed to think of abstract reality. For the purposes of this thesis, abstract reality is defined as a new imaginary world that recently, that recently emerged within the last 0.001% of life's total time on Earth. Abstract reality seems unique to humans. The only animal to have survived the evolutionary journey and prospered enough to have the capacity to think of it. The author acknowledges there are detailed fields of philosophy, theology, ideology, phenomenology, and metaphysics with far more detailed and varying definition of these terms. This is how the author will use the term throughout this thesis. Juggling these two different realities at the same time is quite an energy intensive burden for human brains to bear. So to make it more efficient, sapiens show extreme favoritism towards their subjective, abstract and imaginary reality. Then they superimpose their abstract and imaginary beliefs onto sensory input seen, smelled, tasted, touched and heard from objective physical reality. Brains appear to have no way of knowing if a detected pattern is anything but abstract when it's first generated. So they rely on their hosts to cross-reference their abstract thoughts against physical sensory inputs to determine if the imaginary pattern is a physically real pattern. Is a physically real pattern. More on this in the next section. The way human brains think is noteworthy for two reasons. First, it suggests humans experience the world foremost through their imaginations, then determine what is real based off what imaginary patterns happen to correspond to matching sensory inputs. Second, it suggests sapiens use abstract thinking in both directions of data processing for dual purposes. Brains process physical inputs from objective physical reality at the same time they generate abstract beliefs about physical reality for the senses to investigate. These two separate tasks occur simultaneously all the time. Human minds produce a mental model of the world which influences the way they think, act, and perceive the information they receive back from their senses. Brains therefore act like a lens through which sapiens understand the world in abstract reality, while simultaneously acting as the mechanism through which they shape the world in objective reality. This bi-directional feedback and dual-use type of abstract thinking 
where the brain's imagination influences the processing of its physical sensory data inputs as well as its outputs appears to be the key enabling skill set required for a phenomenon called symbolism. The author acknowledges there are detailed fields of psychology with far more detailed and varying definitions of symbolism. This is how the author will use the term throughout this thesis. Humans are so skilled at using their habitually over energized brains to perform bi-directional and dual use abstract thinking that it appears that it happens automatically without being conscious of it. It appears to be extraordinarily difficult for humans to turn off this behavior unless the brain becomes physically damaged or chemically impaired. It's practically impossible for humans not to distort their senses with their abstract thoughts or act purely off experience experiential knowledge, i.e. knowledge gained based exclusively off sensory inputs without biasing those inputs with our own subjective or abstract thoughts. Ironically, humans can't do what other animals can do effortlessly, experience objective physical reality for what it is, without skewing sensory inputs through a neocortical lens of abstract biases. Whereas most non-human species can't perceive symbols and abstract meaning in the first place, sapiens can't not perceive symbolic patterns and abstract meaning. Once given a pattern, once a given pattern has been committed to memory, the reader is invited to test this out. Try to look at this page without detecting symbols like letters and words or try to listen to someone produce the audible wave pattern of your name without detecting that abstract concept called your name. Most people find this to be impossible, except for people drugged, brain damaged, or experiencing severe memory loss. Another way to show how difficult it is to not think symbolically is to look at figure 35. The blue and black scribbles drawn above and below the gray dashed line are identical in every way except for their topology. Simply change their topology, and like magic, a bunch of nonsensical and objectively meaningless scribbles suddenly turn into something with rich symbolic meaning, even though the only thing that changed was the topology of the scribbles. If you don't see the same objectively meaningless scribbles, meaningless scribbles above and below the gray line, then you are guilty of applying abstract symbolic meaning to something that is objectively meaningless. Technically speaking, the scribbles drawn above and below the dashed line are equally meaningless, but you can't see it that way because you have committed the the topological patterns below the gray dashed line to memory as symbols denoting semantically and syntactically complex abstract meaning. That's how gifted sapient brains are at abstract thinking. You don't even have to try, and you can't turn it off. You are a slave to your neocortex, incapable of not perceiving symbolic patterns and imaginary meaning, with which directly interfere with how you process physical sensory inputs and how you perceive the shared objective physical reality we're living in. The scribbles above and below the dashed line are the same except for their topology. 